Did you know just by adding one function into your code, it can become extremely evasive? In the previous videos we talked about what staging and why this technique is so important and overpowered. In a nutshell, staging is a technique which allows you to fetch your payload or shellcode in our case remotely during runtime. This allows us to effectively swap shellcodes which makes our payload first evasive and second flexible and third customizable. But there are some caveats to this technique. One of the caveats is that usually in most of the cases the HTTP protocol which we used was heavily monitored by the boot teams which means that if that's the case most of the time if we do staging over raw HTTP or even HTTPS our payload would fail because of first it would fail to deliver the final payload or second it would fail to get us a beacon. Because of that, we're gonna be doing something different. In this video, we're gonna take the staging technique one step further and we're gonna switch the protocol. In that case, we're gonna be using SMB. Now, you may ask, well, LSEC, why SMB? It's slow, it does not allow external interaction by default, why you choose that protocol? And I may answer, well, that's not always the case. I've rendered into so many environments where it outgoing SMB traffic is just enabled. Or even better, if you are inside the network, you can then you can completely get rid of your HTTP staging server because there the SMB traffic by definition is enabled. And trust me, in, in most of the cases, if the boot team are paying most attention to what's happening over HTTP, the SMB is gonna be much, much more evasive. Now, in order to start with our process, we're gonna need two things first. First, we're gonna need our initial payload, and second, we're gonna need our server there. Now, for the case of the simplicity of the demo, I'm gonna use a payload which communicates over TCP, not the SMB itself. I'm gonna use a simple virtual payload from MSF Venom, but there are C2 frameworks like Mythic, which actually supports SMB communication. So, go check Mythic. Check its agents and see which one suits for your need. But now let's just start by setting up our payload. I'm gonna go into desktop and remove my test.bin, which was my previous testing payload. Now, by doing MSF Venom minus P, Windows X64 shell reverse TCP, we do a stage this payload there, which is gonna give a shell. I'm sure you're pretty familiar with that, we're not gonna dive deep into it. Elko is gonna be ETH0, Airport 443, as I mentioned, communication over TCP just for the case of, simpl of simplicity. The format is important and that's to be raw and then the output file would be test.bin. Now why do we want a raw format? Because when we read a file from a C, we can read that file on a binary level and we can directly from the file load it into the memory. So let's just generate a payload and showcase how that's been done. Well that's the case, I'm also set up my NCAT listener to be on, four, on port 443 just to have it running and now we need the final piece of the server side and that's to actually do our staging server. Now that's been done with Impacket SMB server, we define the share name to be just share, why not? We're gonna stage the current folder and all the files inside. The TS and debug flags are for debugging purposes. They're gonna first specify the timestamp and second, the book messages to be more verbose. And the next flag, the third one, is actually super important. This is SMB2 support and what that flag is all about is that it configures the server to be compatible with SMB version 2, which is the default SMB version of Windows. So imagine if you miss that if, if you miss that flag, the SMB server will most likely work on SMB V1, which is by definition blocked on most Windows machines, and then your staging is gonna fail. So this flag is extremely important, and if I run the command now, my SMB server is up and ready. And by the way, Impacket is built in Incavi, so just having Kali is enough to run that, te that technique. Now let's switch back to my command VM and let's analyze the code and let's test it. Moving into the code, we can observe the code is extremely short and simple, but let's analyze it line by line. If you're familiar with C and know what all these things are, you are just free to copy it and move on. Now, the first two lines are our include statements. This includes the library you're gonna use in order for our application to work. The first one is Windows.h because you're gonna use Windows APIs, and if you need Windows APIs, you're gonna need the corresponding library. And then the second one is stdl.h, which is needed for invoking a native C functions like memcopy, as you're gonna see in a bit. Then we have our shellcode variable, and here are a little bit of caveats. Now, I, in, I intentionally designed the buffer variable to be 460 bytes because that's exactly how much is the size of the payload I've generated before. Now that's a, that I know for a lot of experiments but if you want to test it with different payloads you can 
tweak the setting or even better implement dynamic memory allocation which is gonna allocate just enough memory as you're gonna need. Moving on we have our main staging function which pretty much does all the staging job and this function is called readbin, it accepts a file name and what it does it's all about invoking two Windows APIs. The first Windows API is Create File A. Create File A is a simple Windows API that's designed to give us a handle to a file. So it, you can imagine, opens a file somewhere. It has a lot of attributes, but the attributes I used were specifically designed to make the file to be in read-only mode. And keep in mind that opening file in read-only mode is very suspicious than actually writing to a file. So opening a file in read mode is not raising that many awareness. Now, as I mentioned, the flags I initially used was spe specifically designed for reading the file. So you can see beside the file name, the desired access is going to be generic read, the shared mode is going to be file share read, and then we have the open always, which means that we're going to open and read the file. Now we have one more flag, which is file attribute normal. This flag is supposed to tell the program that the file is not a special one, it's not encrypted, it's not hidden of some form, it's just a normal file. And if you read the documentation, all these parameters are well, well explained. Now, this is going to return a handle to a file. We can just simply if the handle is no, and if it's no, we can print an error that we could not, we could not open a file. And then after we have the handle, the next thing is to actually read what's there into a variable we have. In my case, I've done that with the Windows API called read file, and that read file accepts a little bit less arguments. So we have the handle to the file, the memory we want to actually write the contents of there, the size of how much we want to write there, actually read, apologize, and then two optional flags, which I designed them to be no. Of course, you can take a better look at the flags, but since they are optional, they do not need that much attention. One of the flags was that it allows a threat inherit a handle inheritance, but in that case, we don't really need it. And to make things simple, just keep them no. We can again check if the, res if the response is all right by seeing if the result is false or true, because this function returns an actual boolean and not a handle. And if it's false, we can again print an error and exit and so on. But in that case, yeah, you get the idea. Now, moving on, in that function there, we just open the file. We just read what's from the file into a buffer variable, but we didn't ever specify a file share. Well, that's the whole point. By using the create file a Windows API, we can also specify local paths, but we can specify a share path. So in that case, the first thing I do is using virtual alloc to allocate a memory for my running process with having mem commit mem reserve flags and page execute read write. Hey, I know that's not the most object thing, thing to do, but now we are keeping the thing simple. Then I'm calling the read bin file and since it's a void, I don't actually have any return value out of it. So I just call it like that. And then I perform mem copy into the address I just allocated. Now, since the buffer is now there, it's gonna be allocated to the memory and then it is executed via direct pointer. By the way, if you want to learn more about direct pointer, I created a book which is gonna be linked in the description of that video, which explains in detail how this syntax work and why it helps us to be extremely evasive more on that in the description of the video now i need to tweak my settings now i'm gonna go back to my kali machine and actually unlock my window there open a new terminal and just fetch my ip address in that case i believe it's the same yes it is so i can just compile the application now from the kali side i don't really need, need this terminal anymore the smb server is there up and running the netcat listener is there up and running so what is left to do is to actually execute the payload then let's hope it's gonna work. So I'm gonna open a PowerShell window there. I'm gonna paste it like that. And let's see what's gonna happen. First things first, we have our SMB connection coming. And not only we got a shell on the Netcat listener, but we also was able to, to get and capture the credentials, the encrypted credentials of the LSEC user. In that case, it's a NTLM v2 hash. Of course, you can try to crack it, but yeah, that's not the main goal of the video, but that's a quick side quest that the application does. So not only, so not only it gets a shell, it also gives us the credential for the user which executes the binary.
Then, on the next screen, we can indeed observe that the payload is successfully executed and now we can successfully issue command and pretty much enjoy our little beacon. In order to test the evasiveness of our payload, I prepared three scenarios. First, we have Andy scan me, but I highly doubt that's gonna work because in, let's say, 10 of my previous videos, it just didn't. Now the API seems to work. So let me try to just support the binary we just created. I'm gonna go to this PC, navigate to C, users, LSEC, where is that? Source, repos, SMB stage, come on x64 release and upload this file there now scan it and again i see the error so i'm officially anti anti scan me so remove that one out but i have found an alternative in my discord one of the guys shared this amazing platform so make sure to join the discord server we share a lot of knowledge there and this is alternative to anti scan me they say and claim that they did not actually uh, share samples but who knows Never mind, let me open up the same file. So, source, repos, SMB stage, x64 release, and open the SMB stage.txt. Now, let's see what's gonna happen and if any of the AV vendors there is gonna detect the binary. Now, it's scanning, come on, and 0, 0 out of 12. Now, keep in mind that this does not mean that your payload is gonna evade an EDR or evade any any comprehensive AV like a set and so on because I found the set to be quite hard to bypass. Now what that means is that on signature level all the AVs cannot find anything bad about this file but keep in mind that if you use well-known payload in runtime such as the one we just used the chances are that it's gonna get detected in runtime by the memory scanners so the evasiveness does not happen only from dropping the file but also what happens after you, ju you just execute it and for that purpose by the way i have participated the besides conference here in bulgaria sofia and i held the workshop about very simple model development and when that's done i'm gonna upload the link in the description of that video but i'm gonna also put a link to my resources there so you're gonna see the presentation and you're gonna have access to this application you see on the screen i have developed an application which is using mz and defender engine to scan the files you upload and then if the scan is succeeded which means that no malware is found the application is gonna execute it which is a nice application to test whether your beacon is gonna work because after all at the end if it works you're gonna get a shell so let's see how it works i'm gonna go back to my command vm machine and navigate to the url i have from my flask application from here i can browse and again i'm not sure why my windows do do not actually saves the history of my uploaded file but that's completely fine i guess so smb stage x64 release i'm already there quick speed and then upload a file now let's see what's gonna happen and if defender and ams is gonna actually find that there's something malicious with the file now on the server side let's analyze once again everything is set up we have the listener we have the smb server and now let's just simply upload it run it and the engine says that no threats are found and then on the Kali machine we have a beacon. Now here I can start using command and then operate with it, which completely bypassed Windows Defender. If you want to learn more about the application itself, you, you are free to read the source code. It's based on the AVRED engine, which I already did a video about it and I am yet to create a blog about it too. So that was the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope these techniques help you to craft more malware development skills and be more awareness that the HTTP slash S is not the only protocol that can be used.